And moving forward, in celebration of Disney Pixar's Luca being released this past weekend, we're going to reveal our top five favorite films from the animation giant Pixar Animation Studios. Now, Darius, I'm going to let you go first on this one. What's your number five? Oh, man. Well, I, why do I have to go first on this one? This is so hard for me to so. do. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay. Uh, I think on my number five would have to be Inside Out. I okay. love Inside Out for all the reasons of it being this teenage, this little young woman, essentially, going through a bunch of emotions, and we get to visually see those emotions and how they actually affect her psychologically. And that's re- that's one of the big reasons why Inside Out is in my top five Pixar films. So I absolutely yeah. love Inside Out. Yeah, terrific movie. I remember seeing it like a couple days after uh, prom. So that was definitely a memorable experience, to say the least. Now, as far as my number five, I think a lot of people are going to be shocked that, I'm, that this movie is only number five on my list. And that has to be Toy Story. Now, again, this is the shot heard around the world for Pixar. This is the shot heard around the world, I think, for computer animation in general. This is the very first computer animated feature length film in history. And this is one of these films that's not a one trick pony because you think with something like this, that like, oh, it's the first computer animation film. That's probably all it's going to have going for it. Nope, not even close. You know, this movie is funny. It's witty. It has a lot of great characters that have gone to just like be um, milestones in terms of just like pop culture entertainment in general. Um, again, terrific characters. It's a very funny movie. Voice performances. You have Tom Hanks. You have Tim Allen. You have Don Rickles as Mr. Potato Head. May he rest in peace. You have a lot of great mm-hmm. music, so that's, again, all that coming together to really just make a landmark film. So Toy Story is number five for me. Okay, my number four, uh, this actually might come as a shock, but we'll discuss this later in this podcast, will actually be Luca. Really? Okay. All right, so yes. you're not, I'm not going to press you too much on that <laughs> at the moment. But all right, that's let's just say for let's just say this was a very hard list for for me to make. Same. But Luca, I just think it's definitely my number four. All right, stay tuned, stay tuned, folks. All right, so my number four has to go with uh, has to be Ratatouille. Now, in my opinion, uh, this is one of, among the more underrated Pixar films. Well, it, it, here's the thing: it was very well received. But for whatever reason, in my opinion, it's just not really talked about as much because, again, this is just such a great film. It has a very unlikely hero. Uh, hero, excuse me, I'm making up words now. Unlikely hero, <laughs> and like it seems like a kind of like an odd concept for a kid's film. And again, I love the voice. One of the things that I felt was very unique about this film from other Pixar films was the voiceover narration from Remy. I think he had like great insight, very, you know, just like a great voice all around, great perspective. I think it's the best way to put it with him. And again, this is, I remember seeing this like around like the last day of fourth grade. So I was like 10 years old when this movie came out. And one thing that like, I think about that makes me laugh was I remember my mom first watching this movie and she was freaked out because there were rats in the kitchen. So I don't know, that's just something that always makes me chuckle. But again, this is another movie that has a lot going for it. Again, great animation, you know, great storytelling. And yeah, that's that's my number four. Yeah, uh, my number three well, oh man, it's, it's I, I I did. It will have to be up. This movie hit all the strings for me, uh, both the and re- it's really the beginning of Up. That's what sold me on this movie, and that's what really tugged my heart. Everything from his, what the old man's passions was, the kids, and just how everything just felt just so organic and so uplifting at the same time that up is easily my number three and i will constantly cry to this movie it doesn't mm-hmm. matter if i'm 40 i will cry again <laughs> you know it's funny you say that up is your number three because my number three is actually up um one of the things oh, uh- <laughs> i will say about this movie was there, there aren't a lot of sequences in film history that will completely fuck you up more than the first 10 minutes of up this, mo- this yeah. sequence alone, this sequence alone could just, honestly, I think it could work as a short film, like a really depressing animated short, animated <laughs> short film. But uh, one of the things that I, or among the things I love about this movie 
is that it's not afraid to tackle mature issues like we see in the first 10 minutes of the film. But at the same time, it's still hilarious throughout. This movie is fucking hysterical. This is probably the best balance of comedy and drama that I think Pixar has ever offered. And it has like a very weird and like unconventional adventure. But at the same time, it never really feels unrealistic or fantastical, which I Mm -hmm. think is very strange. Like, obviously, you know, where they go, like, isn't realistic. You know, it's not like you can see this actually happening. But at the same time, it doesn't really have that out of world um, feeling to it. But... I don't know. It's just very weird. It's just like a very strange feeling looking mm-hmm. back on this film. But at the same time, again, obviously not bad in any terms by um, any stretch of the imagination. It just feels it feels like it's a very unique film. Yep. So that's my number three. And my number two will go to Soul. Everything from the music, everything from the. Uh, just the passion of Joe Gardner, what he strived for, uh, how it intertwined with 22's uh, hysterical um, questioning of reality and human beings, I thought was just so well executed that it's, I, I want to say Soul's my number one, but it's not because something overtook that, to be honest for me. Uh, and Again, I still thoroughly enjoyed Soul. I enjoyed being in the heart of like Harlem and seeing the music, feeling the music, feeling the passion, all of that. So Soul is definitely my number two. My number two, honestly, and again, this may come as a shock to certain people, but I honestly think this one is the best in the particular franchise, and that has to be Toy Story 3. Um, this is one of these <laughs> the movies that, um, I remember when it came out, I was trying to get a day with my friends to go and see this film. And for whatever reason, our schedules weren't um, lining up. I got so impatient that I looked up the synopsis to the film. And when <laughs> I finally went to go see the film, I was still questioning things as I was watching it. That's how engaging this movie is. Like, like for example, again, this movie's over 10 years old. If you haven't seen it. This isn't a spoiler at this point. You know, you're living under a rock. When they're in <laughs> the incinerator, right? Oh, man, I remember yes. I read that online, and it says that they get out. But the, in the actual movie itself, I'm thinking to myself, like, oh, man, are they actually going to get out of this? Like, <laughs> I, I, I don't know. <laughs> um, again, this movie is very, it's emotionally hefty, to say the least. Um, I definitely, cr- I, I, I cried in the theater. I cried in the theater because of the emotional power yeah, that this film has. I cried. As far as, like, you know, moving on from, like, you know, the certain people that you care about, and, like, you know, just, like, ending certain chapters in your life. And I felt like that that really struck a nerve with me because at that time, we thought that Toy Story 3 was going to be the last Toy Story film, right? So in a way, it mm-hmm. marked, it was one of the marks of the end of my childhood. Even though, again, like I was, I was 13, like I was going from kid to teenager at that point, but it still felt like a mark to the end of my childhood. Um, again, mm, that sounds has, familiar. <laughs> yeah, really. Yeah. Um, but it, even just uh, emotional power aside, there are a lot of great characters in this movie. I love how they blended the new and the old characters. Like, you know, nothing ever, no one ever feels like extraneous. No one ever feels underdone. And uh, this would have been the perfect ending to the series. And that's not to bash Toy Story 4, because honestly, Toy Story 4 was, I think, the sequel that a lot of people didn't know they wanted. They did a great job with that. But yeah. I still think that Toy Story 3 was the, would have been the perfect ending to the series. So I get that's even after Toy Story 4, Toy Story 3 is my number one out of the entire franchise, but only my number two for Pixar. Okay. Uh, My number one is probably definitely, you know, definitely in my top five Pixar films. But my number one will actually go to Coco. Um, I absolutely love this movie from everything from the, the music and the feeling of family, the importance of family and ancestry. Um, and really the fact of, you know, and what really hook, hooked me on with this, just like how Up did, was, was uh, you know, the, the grandmother and just how, you know, the state she was in, just uh, the muse, how music brought her back and everything. And the movie definitely, I, let's just say for a good half if not the third act of the film i was crying the entire time i was either balls out mm-hmm. crying or i was getting teary-eyed and 
Balls out or, crying, huh? Yeah. <laughs> or, you know, like, I would cry stop in, like, that third act when I went and saw this. But this movie, you know, I have, for me personally, I had a close relationship with my grandmother, uh, you know, and this movie kind of brought me back to that and was just like, wow, this is, I don't know how you guys did it. First it was up, now it's Coco. And literally in yep. the theater, I was like, God dang it. Damn it, Pixar, why did you do it again? <laughs> <laughs> um, but like, yep. Coco's easily definitely actually probably my number one because just everything, again, I, I love my family. You, you know, I love my family no matter what. We can always have our differences, that sort of thing. But Coco definitely helped unify that as well as artist integrity and i think as us as upcoming filmmakers and writers it's important to keep that integrity in our artwork in our writing in our films to get the messaging actually across and hopefully not be tampered with too much that takes that deviates and takes away what makes our piece our piece of writing our film our video game our animation special the way it is and i think that it also tackled that to a degree, again, that just unified everything for me. Unified the family, theme of family, uh, being one with yourself, being and you know, artist integrity. So Coco definitely has to be most likely my number one. And just this movie almost made it to my top five. Honestly, I think I could easily switch this out with Luca, but just as one extra thing, again, it's not six, but something that would have been up there is Wally. Uh, for obvious reasons, well, I don't have to. Film, so. Oh yeah, I don't want to get into too much of that. But Coco, I absolutely adore that movie. That's made me cry. Yeah. Probably not as more as Up, but compared to how Up, every single time I upload that movie, I watch it, I'm crying. You know, Coco. When I get to that scene, I'm crying. <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's 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 just what happens. I don't know why. <laughs> You know, it's funny because, like, I remember when I went to go see Coco, like, I heard, like, a lot of people were getting, like, very emotional with the movie. And while the, the movie throughout definitely tugs at, tugged at my heartstrings, um, I managed to almost make it through the whole thing without crying. But um, nice. his great-grandmother, <laughs> his, his great-grandmother looked, reminded me a lot, and just how she looked, of my great-grandmother, my nana. Who you know? Who passed away like uh, a few years ago? Love you, Nana. Rest in peace. Um, and again, this movie. This is another movie came out like four years ago. This isn't a spoiler at this point. When they place the picture frame of her <sighs> on the table with the other relatives that are passed, I'm like, fuck, and I just start. I started crying. Like I couldn't. Like God, oh, it's brought back. You know, it brought back too many um, memories. It. I just. You know, I just connected with that a lot. So. You know, Ozzy Coco is definitely it's it's a very powerful film. You uh, just so great, great number one pick. You just mentioning that already made me cry. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, all right, so my number one Pixar film of all time has got to be The Incredibles. This is one of these movies that I thought, like, I always had a great time watching when I was younger. I always thought it was entertaining when I was younger. But as I got older, I realized. Just how brilliant this movie is. Like, you know how certain movies, like, when you watch when you're younger, like, they kind of, like, and then you grow up, yeah. and then they're just not as good? They just don't mature with you? This movie matured with me. There's just so much that this movie has to offer, other than just entertainment value and just how funny this is. This movie has a razor-sharp wit. There, It feels very... Um, unique from other superhero movies. Like, I like it's weird. Like, it feels so unlike other superhero movies that I forget it's a superhero movie, if you really think about it. Yeah. Um, amazing musical score. Robbed of the Academy of the Oscar, of an, even an Oscar nomination. Like, come on, really? Do you, do you listen to this music throughout this movie? Are we hearing the same thing? Like, the music branch at the Oscars are so tone deaf, but that's a conversation for another day. Voice performances all across the board were hysterical. There are just so many amazing and really just memorable scenes, like Dash running on water. Come on. Yeah. <laughs> come on. How great is that? <laughs> But I think the, so thing, the thing that stands out the most about this film to me was the morality of the film, the themes that this film stresses and has to offer, the ideas of individualism, you know, and just to borrow yeah. a couple quotes of the, of the movie, when everyone is super, no one will be. J 
just taking on this idea of like every single person is special or whatnot. Every single person deserves this and that. Another line from the movie when they're talking about Dash, not even graduating like grade school or whatever, but moving from one grade to the next. It's just like, oh, it's a ceremony. So it's like they keep celebrating. They keep creating new ways to celebrate mediocrity. Media, excuse me, mediocrity. Can't talk today. <laughs> mediocrity. And I just feel like that one lesson, that one line alone can be applied to so many things in our society today. And again, this, yep. movie, this movie is 17 years old. This movie is 17 years old. Oof. They keep celebrating. They keep creating new ways to celebrate mediocrity. mediocrity. And again, I played baseball when I was younger. I was in Little League through the eighth grade. I got a trophy every single year. And I'm going to be honest, I didn't deserve a trophy any of those fucking years <laughs> because I was terrible at baseball. I was terrible. So this idea of celebrating just who you are as a person, celebrating what's special about you. Exactly. And that you're not like, no one is like, you know, the guy next to them. But at the same time, no one is automatically um, deserving of the person next to them. Like, you know, I think that we just need to place more of an emphasis on just like, individual achievements and i think that's one of the things that this movie does mm -hmm. extremely well yep oh man wow so, that was our top five <laughs> yeah that went by quicker than i thought it would oh yeah so, <laughs> so now just for all you guys that are still listening is there a pixar <laughs> film of your favorite from pixar film of yours that we didn't mention if you did if we didn't you know what to do there's a comment section there for a reason Mention whatever movie in that comment section there below, whether it's on YouTube, whatever podcasting pro platform you listen to, social media, whichever. And now, before we cap off the show with our review of Luca, don't forget to like, follow, share, subscribe, and hit the bell to get all notifications, whether you're on Spotify, iHeartRadio, Podchaser, and more. And those social media pages in the description, they're there for, their, they're there for you to... Oh my goodness, I can't talk to you. <laughs> Jesus Christ, I'm so sorry, folks. They're there for a reason. They're there for you to follow, like... Spread the word. All that good stuff. And now, 